what the heck? Togon. Alrighty, so it's been a little while since I've made any YouTube content, but I saw that one of my favorite YouTubers, 3Blue1Brown, uh, is doing like a little video submission thing. Um, uh, crap, what's it called? This. This is what it's called. Um, and I thought that I should fill in a little gap of knowledge in trigonometry and simple values of trigonometric functions. So I guess you could say the prerequisite to um, following this video would be you know what the trigonometric functions are like sine and cosine, you know, identities between those things like the uh, the double angle formula, Pythagorean identities in particular, sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta equals 1 uh, for any value of theta and we will also be using the fact that sine of 2 times an angle is equal to 2 times the sine of that angle times the cosine of that angle. And so these facts you need to know. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to be filling in our trigonometric knowledge because uh, I, in a video that I've made previously about a trig chart that I like to teach when I tutor, um, you can essentially remember the sine values of nice angles more or less for free when you see a very neat pattern. So in the left column I'm going to put my values for theta and on the right column I'm going to put my values for the sine of theta. Uh, and I'm just going to stick to radians. So zero radians, sine of zero is zero. Um, but if we do sine of pi over six, which is just a nice fraction of pi, we actually get one half. And if we do pi over four, which is also a nice angle, we get one divided by the square root of two. And if we do pi over three, the sine of pi over three is the square root of three over two. And the sine of pi over two radians, which is a full right angle, is precisely one. And these are very easily derived from uh, squares and equilateral triangles to get those isosceles right triangles, which are the 45, 45, 90 ones, and the uh, interesting scalene one, which is the 30, 60, 90 one. Um, and let's just quickly uh, evaluate maybe a nicer pattern that you can get with these numbers that makes them a lot easier to memorize than these expressions right here. I think you'll probably agree that 0 is equal to the square root of 0 over 2 and that 1 half is equal to the square root of 1 over 2, and that if you rationalize the top and bottom of this fraction by multiplying them both by the square root of 2, you see that this is equal to the square root of 2 over 2, and this one stays as it is. And then, of course, the final trick is to say that 1 is equal to the square root of 4 over 2. I'll let you verify that on your own. You'll notice we have a very neat pattern with these very nice angles of if you take the sine of 0 radians, pi over 6 radians, pi over 4 radians, pi over 3 radians, pi over 2 radians, then respectively you get the exact answer of square root of 0 over 2 and then square root of 1 over 2, then square root of 2 over 2, then square root of 3 over 2, and then square root of 4 over 2. So if you can take the time to memorize these five angles and you can count from 0 to 4, then you have that down. The best part is the list for the sine is just the reverse of this because cosine, I'm sorry, the list for the cosine is just the flip of this list rotated about the middle value because sine and cosine are co-functions. They give the same value at complementary angles. These are complementary angles, these are complementary angles, and this is its own complement because they all, all those pairings add up to pi over 2 and so if you just flip the list you get the values for the cosine. And then all the other functions are derived from those two things. So you only need to remember these five values and those five values there, and you've got the entire unit circle. But that's not what I wanted to talk about today. I wanted to fill in a gap, because even though this nice pattern is completely fulfilled, every integer from 0 to 4 is seen, uh, square rooted and divided by 2. But if we look at our list over here, we don't have pi over 5. Why not pi over 5? Where, dare I ask is pi over 5. Where is the sine of, what, what is the sine of pi over 5, I should say? 
right? Because we know this is 0 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees. So what's pi over 5? It's 36 degrees. So, I don't know, it seems like a nice angle. Um, and it shouldn't be too hard to believe that when we go searching for the answer to the sine of this angle, we're going to need to use a pentagon. So let's try that. So I'm going to try and draw the best pentagon that I can. I'm not the best pentagonalist. But it doesn't look like it's turning out too poorly. Okay, that's not terrible, but we'll go with it. Let's do it. So this is uh, a result. I know it's, you know it's obviously well known what the sine of pi over 5 is. You can just plug it into Wolfram Alpha and you'll get the exact answer. But this uh, deriving it in this particular way was something I thought of on my own. I'm sure other people have thought to do this, but I didn't look up the answer, you know. I just think it's a neat bit of math, so let's go through it. So this is a solution that I came up with. So we're going to find the center of the pentagon. The center of the pentagon is the point where it is equidistant from all five of the vertices. Those distances would be called the radii of the pentagon. Even though it's not a circle, we still call those uh, largest distances to the perimeter, the radii, and you may recall from geometry, if you've suffered through that as an American student, that the vertical distance directly to the midpoint of any of the sides is called the apothem of the shape. And what we're going to assume for the sake of solving this problem is we're going to assume that the radius of this pentagon is precisely one. So this is one unit in length from the center of the pentagon to one of the vertices. Uh, and I'm going to give some points some names. We're going to call this C for center. We'll call this A and we'll call this B. So what is this angle in here inside the, tri inside the angle ACB? Well, before we, uh, you know, answer that question, let's answer maybe a slightly easier question. Let's ask what is the total central angle inside of a pentagon? Well, the you know, the total angle inside of a pentagon is 360 degrees, or 2 pi radians. So this is just either of those numbers divided by 5. So this is 72 degrees, you know, this whole angle here. We might call this uh, D. So angle DCA, I'm sorry, angle DCB is 72 degrees, or 2 pi over 5 radians. Which means the angle we want to ask about, the sine of which we are trying to find, is this angle right here, ACB. Because it is precisely half of that value, or pi over 5 radians, or, uh, you know, 36 degrees. And this, and this immediately reveals why I wanted the radius of the pentagon to be 1, because now we have a right triangle, because CA is the perpendicular bisector of the side of the pentagon. And because it's scaled so that the hypotenuse of this right triangle is 1, that means that the legs of the right triangle are scaled to be precisely the, tr the corresponding trigonometric values of this angle. So the opposite side is the sine of pi over 5. So we know that AB is equal, the length of AB is equal to sine of pi over 5. So if we can find AB, we have the number we're looking for to fill in our gap in our list. And I guess it's worth noting that AC is therefore the cosine of pi over 5 because it is the side that is adjacent to the angle. But this doesn't get us any closer to figuring out what the explicit value is. Uh, what actually gets us there is an amazing result, uh, and I will link to it here, which is uh, Ptolemy's theorem. Uh, and a wonderful professor that I cannot remember the name of on Numberphile does like a pretty long proof of this result, which is wonderful. Uh, that is essentially a fact about quadrilaterals that are inscribed in a circle. So all of the vertices of a quadrilateral that lie on a circle if you then, so something like this. So there's one vertex, there's one vertex, there's one vertex, and there's one vertex. If you then connect all four of those vertices, and then diagonally as well, it turns out that the product of these two side lengths times the, I'm sorry, the product of these two side lengths plus the product of these two side lengths is equal to the product of the two diagonals. And using that in this quadrilateral of the pentagon, because it's a regular pentagon, all of its points would lie on a circle, right? It's a cyclic pentagon. And therefore, this trapezoid 
you know, if I gave these two names, I could name it. That lies on the, the points on the circle, which means we know that these two lengths times these two lengths equals this times that, and you can calculate from that quite easily that the diagonal of a pentagon is precisely the golden ratio times the length of the side of the pentagon. And the golden ratio is mostly, uh, usually denoted with the Greek letter phi or phi. I have no idea how it's pronounced properly. But phi is the, is one, in this case, since it's a positive length, one plus the square root of five over two. And I'm saying that if, okay, so if I called this uh, point E, then I'm saying that DE is this multiple of db, and this number is about 1.618, just uh, for the uninitiated of us. What that means is that de is this many times the length of db, which is evidently two times the sine of pi over 5, since this is the sine of pi over 5, which means the whole thing must be double that. But we're not interested in the full length of de, we're actually interested in half of it. So let's draw, uh, I guess, the other radius from C to this point out here. That was terrible. Let me try that again. And I don't care about this vertex. I care about this intersection point here. And the reason that I care about that is because this is at a right angle, right? This is a, I hope it's evident that from the center going straight at a vertex would cut this diagonal in half at a right angle, which means that this angle here, I guess we'll call this F, the angle FCD is precisely 2 pi over 5, right? That angle right there. Since that angle is 2 pi over 5 and this, this uh, radius CD is also 1, we know that this opposite side here must be the sine of 2 pi over 5. But we already know this distance in terms of something we already have. So if I also give this point a name, this intersection point here, G, we know that GD is therefore equal to the sine of 2 pi over 5, because it's the opposite side of a right triangle with a hypotenuse of 1, and the angle uh, opposite the side is 2 pi over 5. But we know how to express this in terms of just the sine and cosine, uh, this is 2 times the sine of pi over 5 times the cosine of pi over 5. Right? And so as long as we can somehow express sine and cosine of pi over 5, then we're golden. But the thing is, we know that, we know that this distance, DE, the golden ratio, times 2 times sine of pi over 5, because the side length of the pentagon is 2 times the sine of pi over 5, which means this entire thing is 2 times phi times sine of, the pi over, of pi over 5, which means half of that is just phi times the sine of pi over 5, which means that this amount that we have, GD, is precisely phi times the sine of pi over 5, but if phi times the sine of pi over 5 is equal to 2 times the sine of pi over 5 times the cosine of pi over 5, then we can cancel the sine of pi over 5 on both sides because it, it's not 0 for certain. And so then we can then divide both sides by 2. That cancels. And we see that the cosine of pi over 5 is exactly the golden ratio divided by 2. So that tells us that the cosine of the golden ratio is, ex I'm sorry, the cosine of pi over 4 is exactly the golden ratio divided by 2, which would just be 1 plus, oh, not pi over 4, pi over 5, which would just be 1 plus the square root of 5 divided by 4 instead of 2, half as large. But this is all we need to know to find the sine and fill in our gap in the list because the sine of pi over 5 can be related to the cosine of pi over 5 through the uh, Pythagorean relationship, and so we know it has to be true that the sine squared of pi over 5 plus the cosine squared of pi over 5 must be equal to 1. Well, what is cosine of pi over 5? It's phi over 2, so cosine squared is phi squared over 4. 
but phi, phi is the number that when you square it, you just get the original number phi plus 1. That is the property of the golden ratio. So this numerator is precisely phi plus 1. And I'm going to write 1 as 4 divided by 4. So that when I subtract this over, right, I subtract uh, this on both sides. So minus that. And then we get... Uh, 4 minus 1 minus phi all over 4. So this is equal to 3 minus phi over 4. And then this is sine squared. So we can just take the square root of both sides. And we see that the sine of pi over 5 is 3 minus phi over 4 square rooted. The square root of 3 minus phi over 4. Um, and if you want that as sort of explicitly in terms of square roots of, uh, you know, integers, then hang on, let me just rephrase. So we've filled in our gap here with a perfectly valid uh, expression, but let's just maybe write it out in its full exact form. So phi is 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2, and that's all over 4. So I'm going to write this as 6 over 2. And then we're going to get 6 minus 1 minus root 5. So that's going to be 5 minus root 5. And then these 2's in the denominators are going to multiply with that 4 in the denominator. And we're going to get, as our final expression, the square root of 5 minus the square root of 5 all over 8. And that, my beautiful polygons, is the sine of pi over 5. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope this gets considered in the... Uh, undoubtedly enormous volume of videos that uh, you will be receiving grant. Thank you for watching. And, you know, maybe I'm not even talking directly to you. Hopefully uh, someone is making good money watching all of this. Uh, thank you very much. Peace out.